Welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Donovan Brown. Today, we're going to be talking about wikis with Sandeep. Sandeep, welcome to the show. Tell us what you do here at Microsoft. Hey, Donovan. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Sandeep. I'm the product manager for Visual Studio Team Services and, uh, yeah, the PM for Wiki as well. Wikis. All right. So that's an exciting topic that we're going to be talking about. Before we jump into it, why don't you explain to us what is a wiki and why do teams actually use them? Sure. So uh, let me talk about the philosophy of Wiki, like how we started off with Wiki, right? The, the main intent was to make it really easy for teams to create and maintain project and process documentation in an extremely simplified manner so that they can effectively guide their team members to collaborate and contribute. Okay, great. And we've just added that support to Visual Studio Team Services, it sounds like. Yep, absolutely. So Visual Studio Team Services has its own, very own Wiki. All right, great. So why don't you show us how it works? Sure. So, um, so let me start off with like a day zero experience, right? I'm really new to VSTS. I'm creating my first project. So let's call it the Wiki demo, and I'm going to create my first project from scratch. Uh, so while this project is creating, I wanted to give you a quick overview as to how Wiki works. Uh, when I'm creating this project Wiki demo, you would see a Wiki associated with this project Wiki demo itself. So now that we're navigating, so now you see that I am in a VSTS project and you see a small wiki star right here. And that is the new wiki that we've just launched. Okay. So Sandeep, I see you just created a project, but there's actually two wikis, one with a star and one without. Why is that happening? Hey, Donovan, thanks for asking that question. So, uh, so let's talk about this. So wiki star is the, the new wiki, the new VSTS wiki that we just launched. Um, for those users who have already installed the old wiki extension, uh, that was published on the marketplace, they will actually continue to see Wiki. And our recommendation is that once you have moved from uh, the old Wiki to the new VSTS Wiki, you should go ahead and uninstall your Wiki. I see. So this is an example where we actually created an extension, and now we've put that functionality in the box. So now we need people to go back and uninstall the old way that they were using it. Absolutely. Once they've migrated their pages, they should go back and uninstall. Uh, that's right. Okay, that's a good point. So they're actually going to need to migrate the content of the extension over to the new wiki before they uninstall it. Absolutely. And uh, we provide a tool for, for users to do that, and uh, all the details are right here on the extension. On oh, the fantastic. All right, cool. So let's show us how, how the new wiki works. All right. So um, this is what any user would see who has permission to create a wiki, and this is like a day zero experience. So let, let's go ahead. There's not much to do. Let's just create the wiki. So directly, as you could, I would see, um, I've landed directly on the uh, on a home page, on a page that is sim a simple edit experience. Um, so let's now create our first page, right? Let, I'm, I'm just going to call it the home page, um, and let's save it. Let's save it without content, and let's see what happens. So as you would have seen, right, I just created a page. And the first page that I create kind of gets created as a home page. What, what basically it means is that any visitor who comes and clicks on Wikistar would actually land on this home page. Okay. Now, let me, let me start getting into the details of how people generally create wikis or how, how do you just structure documentation. So, Donovan, let me ask you this question, right? Uh, let's say you have to create a PowerPoint. What would be the first thing that you will do when you're creating the PowerPoint? I'll usually start to lay out an outline or some type of table of contents to get some idea where I want the, the, art, the application or the, the document to go. Absolutely. So, so let's do it, right? Let's, let's do it the conventional way. So this is a classic table of content that I really want to create. I, I don't want to talk about wiki capabilities, what are the various capabilities that we support. Um, as you see that I edited in Markdown, I'm able to preview it. But hey, that's like, that's like really old fashioned, right? Let's see how you could do it, something very similar in the new wiki. So I know I want to talk about the home page. As part of the home page, I want to talk about, let's add a sub page. And I want to talk about the rich markdown capabilities, right? Okay. And this was the T TOC that you were creating. So let's just create this TOC right here with us. So if you see, I'm able to create this TOC right here. So let's create another page just for uh, argument sake. So let's create another sub page and let's call it the built in TOC. And for demo purposes, I'm just going to create a new page on the root, uh, and that is about what is coming up next. Alrighty. 
So you see that um, I really don't need to uh, think about creating a TOC and then adding pages separately. We have a built-in TOC in the wiki itself. You keep creating these pages, just forget about content, create this TOC, and then you can always add your content later. Gotcha. All right. So, so let's now, since I'm talking about the TOC, right? Let's let's just play around with it a little bit. So, let's say I create another page called Support, and um, and you know what, fat fingers. Uh, let's create a sub page right here called Contact Us. So, I'm just building something up. Uh, let's see how it goes. All right. So, I think so. My TOC is fairly ready. But hey, you know what? I just made a mistake. Uh, according to what I wanted to show you in the home page, what is coming up next should be before support. So I just click on it, I drag it, and I move it up, and that's it. Great. So your TOC is actually, uh, you can manage the TOC from right here. I was about and to ask that what? question too, because my outline f frequently changes as I start to do development and start working on it, and you, all I have to do now is just drag and drop, and I can reparent items and everything from here. Absolutely. So since you talked about reparenting, as you can see, contact us really does not belong to the home page. That should be somewhere in support, right? Sure. So I should be able to move it right here. And you, as you can see, I'm just clicking and dragging it and dropping it on support. Once I do it, of course, it's a page move. It's a hierarchical change. And there you see, you see the contact us card has just moved down. Fantastic. All right. So um, now that we've created the TOC, um, let's do something fun, right? So I want to talk about the home page. And if you remember, I just wanted to show you all the capabilities of Wiki that I have. So let's just, uh, I'm going to create a, a pre-prepared markdown and I'm going to do something with the markdown. Let's, let's, um, give me one second, please. No problem. Yeah, markdown is not always my favorite language to work in because sometimes I have to, like get in, getting images inside of um, inside of Markdown can be a pain. Attaching documents can be a pain. But I see that you have a nice looks like a WYSIWYG editor. But how do I do with some of that other stuff? Sure. So let's let's do it. So um, I've just copy pasted some content from the Markdown, and if you see, it's rendering. Uh, all right. So I can see some text showing, but guess what? What happened to the images? They're all broken. And um, you see that I wanted to show you an image for the wiki homepage, but you can clearly see that it's broken. Broken. But guess what? I am on the homepage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my snipping tool. Uh, let's take this image right here because this is my homepage. All I've done is a copy. Um, I just copied this image. I'm going to go to the edit experience. This is the faulty image as you can see. And all I do is a control V. And as you can see in the preview, I can actually see the image right here. Fantastic. But uh, Donald, don't you say, think that this image is like too broad? So let me let me see if I can actually resize it real quick. So let's resize it to like a thousand x. All right, let's see. Okay, so at least it's in the in the same container. I think so. Thousand is not really working out very well. Let's do a fifteen hundred x. And you see how I'm able to just customize this entire page according to my needs. I'm just customizing this image right here. Is that is that standard Markdown, or is that something that you're implementing as part of the editor? So this is standard standard Markdown. Got it. Uh, but yeah, so these are capabilities that we've built into the the Markdown IT uh, the Markdown that we're basically supporting. Perfect. So, uh, of course, images was just one of the entities, right? So let's do some more fun stuff. Um, let's create a new page. I'm going to call it my HTML page capabilities. So let's see what I can do with HTML. So by the way, this markdown also supports HTML tags. And as you can see, I've just copy pasted some uh, stuff from HTML. And you see that there's a logo, there's a rich table content. I have tables inside tables. And, and the 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 uh, the fantastic aspect about this is what the the, the page that I've just created is actually a hybrid. Uh, you'll see a ton of markdown capabilities that are within uh, uh, HTML capabilities. So you wow. see that the entire page is an HTML table, but you can see I've created a markdown table within. Interesting. So, yep. So these are some of the rich uh, editing capabilities that we're supporting. Uh, and so I. I I think so. This demo wouldn't go too far if I were not to talk about um, uh, some more HTML stuff that we've done. So let's just copy some more content, and this is I'm just going to call it HTML2 because there's some another some more rich capabilities. So just just save it. 
it's probably one of a number one ask and that is the ability to embed it videos okay. so as you can see i have embedded a video right here and and uh, you can just embed videos play around with a ton of additional html capabilities you see i have complex tables hybrid tables a ton of formatting etc got it so how do i link between these pages oh that's a good question so um so let's let's just link it right so i'm on the home page hey this home page does not really look good without a table of content right mm -hmm. so what's my table of content so you see i created this rich markdown built in toc uh, this built in toc should not be a bullet point right it should be this page so let's just go to this page click on copy page path i come here and i paste and let's just save it so you see now built-in TOC is no more text. If I click on it, I actually land on the built-in TOC page. Fantastic. So, yep. So you can create your own table of content within the H within the Markdown file seamlessly. Now, I, I noticed you've done a lot of incredible improvements to make editing Markdown inside of this particular tool easy. But a lot of us sure. who have actually been doing Markdown for a while use our own editors on our own machines. How do I get this content out of the web browser and onto my machine so that I can use the editor of my choice? Absolutely. So um, a lot of people would have noticed that I'm currently completely working on Wiki as a whole, right? Mm. Now, uh, in the back end, this is nothing but a Git repository. So if I were to go on more and click on clone Wiki, you will see that I'm actually being exposed to a URL. So let's just copy paste this URL in the browser and browser and see what happens. So right now, what you're seeing is actually a Git repository that is powering this Wiki. So if I want to, so let's let's just do something, right? I'm going to make some changes to this home page right here. I'm going to say support um, demo of the wiki. And let's just commit it. And so right now, if you see, I'm making changes to the Git repository and not to the wiki per se. And let's go back to the built-in TOC. Let's go to my home page. And there you see, you see demo of Wiki is showing right here. Great. So, so you can make changes in any editor that you prefer, even if you wanted to edit them somewhere else. Exactly. So you could have cloned this. And uh, you clone it, you make all the changes offline, and then basically just push it back to the master branch of this Wiki. Okay. And you will start seeing these changes right here. All right. Now, you, you mentioned Git. And I know a lot of our customers still use TFVC. Are they going to be able to use Wikis if they chose TFVC when they originally created their team project? Absolutely. So as I said, that this is just a, a hidden Git repository in the Got back it. end. If there's a Git, if there's a, if you have TFVC customers, uh, they will be able to use uh, Wiki seamlessly. The the other good part is that if they're using TFVC and they have a TFVC repository, and if they were to click on the the repo drop down, they will actually not see this Git repository, this Wiki Git repository, and be basically kind of curtailing the unnecessary noise. Uh, for those who are not very conversant with Git as well. I see. Very good. All right. So, uh, so we've talked a lot about the edit experience. Um, I really want to talk about some of the advanced experiences that probably not a lot of power users would use, but uh, I think so. these are things that users should definitely know about. Okay. Uh, so you see that I've made a ton of changes on the page already, right? You see all my revisions are being, uh, are being called out right here. Uh, I can go to any of these revisions, and I can right here see that, hey, I made uh, one addition and one removal from this page right here. And, and this basically gives you a, a high level view as to who has made the change, when the change was made, and of course, what the change is. And uh, you see that these are these pretty breadcrumbs that allow you to go back to where you started from. Great. All right. Um, so uh, one more thing that I really want to talk about, right? So uh, there, there's a ton of functionality that we've built in to make the experience for using wiki really convenient i've seen a lot of times when people have actually created a home page which they really didn't intend to as a result what they have to do is do some cumbersome apps uh, 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 tasks of copy pasting etc well not anymore right so you go here you just set this page as a wiki home page as soon as I said this page is a wiki home page, anybody and everybody who clicks on the wiki star would actually land on my new wiki home page. So I don't need to do that cumbersome activity of copy paste. Fantastic. And I can see the icon on the right hand side actually change so I would indicate which one is actually the home page or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is the whole intent. Great. Well, this has been All fantastic. Right. Sure. 
Um, and I know that we are about to conclude. I just want to conclude with two additional things, which I think so you uh, users would have seen already. Uh, one is that if your wikis grow pretty big, we are powering the the rich filter capability so that you can easily filter out your content. And this is interesting actually. When you when I just filtered by contact, you see the whole hierarchy so that you're not lost. Um, and last but not the least, you will be able to control the security of the wiki. As I said, it's a Git repository in the back end, so you will be able to control who reads, who writes, uh, and who deletes pages on the wiki. Man, thank you so much, Sandeep. So I'm really excited to be able to share this new functionality, and I'm glad that it's actually in the box now. So my last question is, is there any additional charge to use the wikis? I mean, if I have a VSTS account, am I just going to get this, or do am I going to have to pay for it? So Wiki is part of your basic license. So awesome. uh, if any user who has a basic license will be able to create and read anything on the Wiki. Uh, the good news is that if you have stakeholders, stakeholders can also read all the content on the Wiki. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for showing us this new cool features of Visual Studio uh, Team Services. And everyone, thank you for joining us today on Visual Studio Toolbox, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks.